Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I've got an update for you on my Comcast fiber optic connection. I've been on their Gigabit X6 plan, formerly known as Gigabit Pro, for about two and a half years now. And I was fortunate because I happened to be very close to a fiber optic splice box at the end of my road, and they were able to connect me to this service. So my internet has not been coming in over the coax cable. It has been coming in over a Metro Ethernet, basically commercial grade, fiber optic connection that goes right back to their head end. Now, when I first got the service, it was maxing out at two gigabits symmetrical, which to be honest, was more than enough for me. But over the last couple of years, they've been upping the speed as their competitors have been coming into the area and offering service that was close to that rate of speed. And recently, Frontier started selling a five gigabit symmetrical product on their passive fiber network and Comcast decided to basically open the floodgates on their Gigabit Pro service level. So check it out. Very quietly, they didn't even tell me about this. I just ran a speed test the other day, and check it out. I am uh, pretty much at the maximum that my, my router can support here. So we're getting 9.2 gigabits downstream here, and the upstream is uh, suffering here a little bit, and this might just be a limitation of the speed test server that I'm connecting to. Uh, but by and large, I have been north of eight and a half gigabits per second now uh, throughout most of the tests that I've been running here over the last couple of days. And again, they haven't even announced this yet. They just quietly rolled this out and suddenly my speeds are kind of off the charts here. And this is about indicative of what I've been seeing here over the last couple of days. But what happens when you have this much bandwidth is that this is really the amount of bandwidth I have going into Comcast network. They have to have peering arrangements for me to really see this coming from other places like my Steam downloads or other types of things that I'm doing. So for example, if I switch my test server here and maybe point it at, uh, I don't know, uh, Norwood Light Broadband here out of Norwood, Massachusetts, we'll see a very different rate of speed here uh, because they have different arrangements with Comcast about how much bandwidth they will allow to transit at one time. So for the most part, my experience with this faster service isn't all that much different than the two gigabit service I had when they first installed everything. I do think this 10 gigabit speed is about the max that they're going to be able to deliver, at least with the current technology they have up on the poles there. But I think we're at a point now where we have, at least in some areas, so much bandwidth available, it's going to take a while for all of these different CDNs out there to be able to really deliver to us that bandwidth over longer distances and certainly between different networks on the internet. And I've also been having some challenges just with my networking gear at the house. So the test you just saw was going off of my MacBook Pro here, connected up with a Thunderbolt 10 gig ethernet adapter. And I was running the cable here right into my equipment room over there where my router is located. But if you're someone who's primarily on Wi-Fi, when you run a speed test over a wireless network, you're never gonna get close to those speeds. So for example, here on my iPhone, I'm getting about 500 megabits per second downstream, which is not bad for Wi-Fi over Wi-Fi 6, uh, but certainly nowhere near the maximum bandwidth that my network now uh, can support. So I think we're at a point here where, you know, for most people that are out shopping for an internet connection, if your fiber provider has 500 megabits up and down, that's probably going to be fine, I think, for most families. It's certainly a lot more than most people have on a cable connection. And it's challenging when you get north of six gigabits to really take advantage of it. So, for example, my router in there is a UDM Pro from Unify. And the manufacturer of the router, Ubiquity Networks, rated it initially at about eight gigabits per second of total routing potential. But that's with its deep packet inspection security features disabled. I have those features disabled on my router right now, which is why we're getting the speeds that we're getting. We're doing a little bit better than what this chart indicates, and I think they may have had some firmware updates that improved its performance over time, but I'm still under the 10 gig uh, performance level that I could be getting out of it. The other two charts there indicate what kind of performance you'll get out of the router when its deep packet inspection features are enabled. So you can see you take a huge performance hit on this one when you do turn those things on. So I have them off at the moment. Now, a friend of mine around the corner also has this fiber optic service. His name is Red Techie. You can check out his YouTube channel and see all the cool projects he's got going on at his place. And as you can see, he's doing much better with his home-built PFSense router where he's getting pretty much the full potential now of this 10 gigabit 
connection from Comcast. Now I also noticed some other things on my network here. So for example, my two Windows computers, my studio production machine that I use down here in the basement and my gaming PC upstairs have only been able to get a maximum of six and a half gigabits per second out of their connections. And I have tweaked every setting I could possibly find both on the switch and on the driver and I cannot get this thing to budge beyond 6.6 .6 gigabits per second. And that's on two different PCs. This one down here is running Windows 10. The gaming PC upstairs is running Windows 11. I gotta keep working on it. Now, both PCs are running with the same Asus motherboard from a couple of years ago, along with the same network interface card. I bought these 10 g Tech adapters a little while back with SFP Plus connectors on them and the studio PC down here is running back to the switch with fiber. My machine upstairs is running with RJ45. Both of them are having the same issue. So I think there's something going on with these cards, perhaps as they relate to the motherboard. So I've got to tweak things a little bit more. I didn't notice this problem until I started trying to get the most out of this internet connection. So now I've got another project to pursue. Now I did go through some of the reviews on Amazon and I did not see anyone else complaining about this problem. So I suspect it's something related to the motherboard and the driver and how everything is interfacing. If you look at the numbers there, it definitely looks like it's kind of rate limited and I can't figure out where that is all happening. It could just be I'm exhausting the bandwidth on the PCI Express bus, who knows? I'll get to the bottom of it, but if you've got any ideas that I should be looking at, maybe bio settings or something, let me know about that, or perhaps other NICs that you've had good luck with, because maybe this one just isn't cutting it anymore, but we'll figure it out. And guess what? At the end of the day, it doesn't even matter because nothing that I communicate with outside of Comcast network can even come close to delivering me all of the speed that I now have available to me. Now, as I'm sitting down to edit this video, I noticed one other oddity I wanted to point out here. Uh, so you'll see when I'm docked at my desk here, the downstream is about what we saw before, but the upstream is much less. And the reason is, is that when I sit down to work on my videos, I plug everything into this Mac through a single dock connection here off the Thunderbolt port on the side. And so the dock has additional Thunderbolt ports on it. And I have my two displays running at 4K60 off of that dock. And because Thunderbolt shares its bandwidth with the video, my upstream has to be shared between the displays and the network connection. So if I plug that ethernet adapter into its own Thunderbolt port, we get symmetrical speeds here. But because we've got the two displays running here, we're hitting the max of that upstream Thunderbolt bandwidth due to all the things being shared off of that dock. Now, for those of you who have been following me for a while, you know how bad things were here for me before these guys rolled up with the fiber optic cable. I only had 10 megabits of upstream bandwidth and that was bad enough, but what was worse was the fact that the quality of my service over coax was awful. The reason is, is that I was like the last guy off the node and there was probably three or four amplifiers between me and that node. And the result was that whenever I did a live stream, we barely could keep them up because I was having all these drop packets randomly take place throughout the course of my streams, making it really difficult to do that part of what I do. So the big thing for me when that fiber connection was installed was the reliability of service. It's so much more reliable and certainly having the speed is a big boost as well because my video uploads went from taking over an hour to taking about 45 seconds to a minute. And that was part of the reason why I was able to switch to 4K now because I can push those 4K videos up lickety split here. What's interesting though is that YouTube still pretty much restricts my upload speed to where it was two and a half, three years ago. So I'm pretty much under a gigabit most of the time when I upload. But when I send videos up to YouTube, I can then upload to Floatplane at the same time and I can maximize both upload sessions for what each of those providers allow for. So there is some benefit to having all this bandwidth because you can do multiple connections and maximize everything. Uh, but again, I'm not seeing the full bandwidth over just about every server that I connect to regularly through the internet here. On Comcast network, it's great. Beyond that, it's not so great, but what you're getting is far better than what you would get off a typical coax connection from Comcast at the moment. Now, all of this speed is happening because we have competition in my area. And what's been great about this is that my speed has gone up now from two to four to six and now to 10 without a price increase. 
Now, my contract for this service ends in October. I had a three-year commitment on it, so hopefully they don't raise the price. But the other day, Frontier came by with their trucks, and I've got a connection outside on the telephone pole that they can hook me up with. So I have choice now of two fiber providers right here at my house. I didn't have much of any kind of choice just a couple of years ago. So competition is good. I'm reaping the benefits of it, and hopefully that will continue as time rolls on here. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Definitely check out the playlist that I have on this topic because the installation process was really fascinating to me. We covered all the fiber splicing that they did, all the steps that it took to get this in place here. It was a lot more involved than a standard fiber residential connection that you might get with a passive fiber provider. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, definitely check it out in the playlist in the description. I'll be back with some more stuff coming soon. We got my mom situated finally. Uh, we did switch her over to Frontier Fiber Optic at her place. I just got her going today, so I'll be talking more about her situation in the coming days as well. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.